basically all you have to do is not move. So Dave the Trimmer, moving already and I. <laughs> Dave the Trimmer started about six years ago. I was made redundant. I was doing private work anyway. I was uh, yeah, made redundant and um, decided that at that point it was go alone. Yeah. Go and try and find another job, which was in the middle of recession. Yeah. So I thought I'd try and go out and yeah, go solo and see how well it goes. Training in car upholstery um, 18 years ago I started. Right, okay. Uh, worked at a place in Luton called Bart and Son. Right. I learned everything in house. Um, yeah, didn't go to college or anything. There was no college courses as such at that time. Yeah. It's all sort of a thing of the past college courses for trim, but um, yeah, learned everything in house. <laughs> And this particular Porsche job um, was brought to you by a customer and it wasn't as it is now, was it? He bought it, he brought it straight to us um, with a brief of, I want a GT2 spec. So we did a full um, rear seat delete, full headlining, because yeah. it had a blue headlining, we put a black one in there, um, black carpets throughout, lightweight doors, removed all the wing electric window regulators, so it's all now manual windows, so wow. they can keep the weight down. Well, you regret taking out those windy windows now? Mate, it's a bad, <laughs> it's a bad decision. I can't rotate them around the dashboard. <laughs> Change the steering wheel from airbag to a lightweight Momo. Retrim the, um, the Bracaros in it. Yeah. Repainted the seat backs. Wow. Um, and full leather dash. Jesus, and how many hours do you think has gone into that? We probably put in easily 150 hours into it. 150? Yeah, easily, yeah. Wow, that is so long. Yeah. <laughs> That's a long time. Yeah, it's a lot of, lot of work. And you specialise in everything, it's not just Porsches, it's, it's no, yeah, we'll everything. Yeah, everything. We try not to specialise in one brand of car. Yeah. I think it's important to keep it diverse yeah. because you, it broadens your skill set. It it tracks real yeah. diverse work, and um, yeah, we we know Porsches very well. We know Aston Martins very well, um, and TVR and and other cars. But we try not to define ourselves to one brand. And do you still find yourself passionate about reupholstering any car, no matter what it is? It's Yeah, definitely. Massive satisfaction from doing any job. Yeah. Because it's rewarding, isn't it? From from start to finish, you get a car that comes in, it's looking tired, it needs a, it needs a, mm. a retrim, and at the end, you, you step back. And Some again. sprucing. Yeah, and you, you get good satisfa satisfaction from it. 100%. And you've recently done the Liberty Walk build, haven't you? Correct, yeah. So the Lamborghini event is all that I've put on my YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, you did the entire interior for that. That was a complete custom. That was dash, yeah, seats, everything. everything. Was out, yeah, everything was out, all to customer spec. So you did the stitching to yellow, the headline, yes. the um, yeah, that's badges. Right, yeah. yeah, I did all the um, branding on the headrests. Yeah. Um, yellow seat belts, uh, steering wheel retrim, green stitch to yellow stitch, introduced quilting because it didn't have it. A lot of hours, I presume, in that one as well. Many. <laughs> yeah, I, can't, I don't know on that one off the yeah, top of my head. We didn't right. even log it just because. Yeah. Um, where do you right. see, like, where do you see, I know how far you've come in, I mean, six years isn't a long time from going technically self-employed yeah. to now building this and having your own unit. Where do you potentially see yourself in another six years' time, would you say? I think it's important not to grow too big. I think it's about doing a right job and yeah. doing it to everyone's satisfaction, including ourselves. You're just making sure the job's done right. You start going too big, employing too many people, the mistakes can happen. And I think it's easy for me, because I'm on the shop floor still, to monitor what's still going on. Yeah. There's four of you There's working. four of us, yeah, four full time. You don't think of, when you look, go to a classic car show or something and you look at the interior, wow, that's mint. Yeah. It's not like it was when it first came out of the factory. That's been sat in for years and years and years and years and been tired. Yeah. Someone like yourself has then gone into there and made it 
like original or yeah. updated the original. And I find like you're not taking away from its history, mm. but you're certainly like reinventing its its rest of its life. Yeah. And I think that's where this sort of stuff is really like important for people to see. Hundred percent. And it's that's what we're we're about here. We try to recreate the interior how it was originally unless customer specifies he wants it modernized or tweaked to improve and we'll, we'll take that on board we'll try and like listen to the customer also awesome. ultimately make it as good as factory <laughs>